from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Boom, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. We in here. What's going on, guys? We here. Oh, yeah, we're damn near an hour late. I'm still, my time is still off, but damn it, we're here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the building. We are in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have you guys up in here. Glad to have y'all up in here, ladies and gentlemen. We are here, ready to do our thing, like players do. Let me let everybody know on social media that we're live right now. Let me do that before I forget. Let me throw that on here real quick. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. And I hope you guys go to rootworkstyle.com to get your root work. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on one second. So y'all bear with me one second. Let me get this popping. And there it is. Boom. All right. How y'all doing, man? How y'all living? Glad to have everybody tuning in. All right. Glad to have all of you wonderful people tuning in. Um, I need you to let everybody know that we're live right now. Let everybody know that we are live right now. Hit that like button and hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Oh, man. Whew. So what's going on, man? I'm glad y'all tuning in. A um, lot of stuff we're going to discuss on tonight's broadcast. Yes, today the episode is called Hustle and Flop, talking about Kamala Harris and her hip-hop voter outreach plan. <laughs> we got to talk about that. Yes, we just started. We just got on live. We just started. But listen, um, family, the new movie... Microphone check. It's going to be in theaters starting May 23rd. All right. That weekend, we're going to have special screenings in different locations around the country. Um, the weekend of May 23rd. All right. The tickets are going to go on sale next week. So far, we got LA. LA is going to be Thursday, May 23rd. Atlanta, what day is Atlanta going to be? What day is Atlanta going to be, guys? I think Atlanta is going to be Friday or Saturday, May 24th or May 25th. I got to double check with Atlanta. New York, we're going to have two big screenings on Saturday night, May 25th. And I'm going to be at that one. I'm going to be at the one in L.A. on Thursday, and I'm going to be at the one in New York on the 25th. That's going to be a big one because we're going to have the red carpet event there. There's going to be a 7 o'clock and a 10, a 10 o'clock showing. There's going to be two showings. And they got a big theater out there, like a 400, 500-seater theater, real nice-sized theater. Um, we're working on D.C. Um, we're working on New Orleans. Dallas is going to be at the Texas Theater. That is, I think, Saturday. I'm going to keep everybody posted on the dates. Y'all better get your tickets. When we put the tickets on sale, y'all better get your tickets early. 
because what happens is people try to wait like this is like a, a, a typical movie. And then you try to wait the day of and it's all sold out and you outside the theater mad. Now you got to go see um, Star Wars or something. You got to go see another movie. You got to go see The Color Purple, the musical. All right. Atlanta is the Tara Theater in Atlanta. Atlanta is going to be at the Tara Theater. All right. We're working on Chicago. Yes, we're working on Chicago. We're working on the Bay. But yeah, and Atlanta's going to be at the, the Tower Theater. Um, my, my Chicago people, because we're trying to secure the, um, the um, theater, and I don't know my way around Chicago too much. One place looked, what was it? It, it seemed kind of out of the way. Um, but we're working on Chicago. We're working on Chicago. So guys, you got to come out. Yes, we, definitely we're going to do Chicago. So we're hitting all the... The main spots. We're hitting all the main spots. All right. We're hitting all the main spots out here. The microphone check movie. It's a movement. You guys got to go out there. Um, Y'all got to hit the theaters, man. It's a family thing. You got to take your family out. Um, it's, a, it's a vibe. And also, we need to work on um, Memphis, Tennessee, too. My Memphis people, what are some um, some big theaters out there that we can get? My Memphis people. Yeah, we're working on the Bay. So my, my people holler at me. In your, in, um, let me know what big theaters are in your area that can accommodate three or 400 people. All right. Let me know some of the theaters in your area. So y'all holler at me. But um, yeah, we got the, the real big ones in New York, Atlanta, Dallas, L.A. It's going to be a vibe. All right. But anyway, let, let's get into what we're talking about. And again, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. All right. Um, so Kamala Harris and um, the Democrats, they're doing their usual pandering without coughing up them tangibles to foundation of black Americans. They're, they're giving all of these different groups every tangible you can imagine. They're giving them tangibles left and right. And um, illegal immigrants coming over here getting tangibles. They're getting things popping. But when we say we need those tangibles, here's a, a rapper. We're going to have a rapper. Here's a rap party. We're going to play some sexy red. We're going to twerk, turn up. It's party time when it comes to us. You start parading rappers around. So now the Democrats, they got they, they really, really want to prop up Fat Joe. They really, really been trying their damnness to really make Fat Joe some type of ambassador. And, and, and look, I, I know it seems like we are beating up on Fat Joe all the time. No, we're not. We're not. Well, Fat Joe is getting in where he can fit in, but the Democrats, the left-wingers, they're really trying to use Fat Joe because Fat Joe is somewhat respected in hip-hop circles, and he's a Latino, and he's willing to do, to toe the line for left-wing agendas. All right? He's willing to go out here with the whole 50-50 and Latinos this. You know, they, they know he's a useful tool for them. All right. So they're really parading Fat Joe around. They have him hosting BET award shows. They try to make him a staple within black society. And it's really not working like they think it's working. And this ain't, this ain't even no shade to Fat Joe. Again, Fat Joe is getting in where he can fit in. Um, but we ain't buying it. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying we ain't buying the finesse. Yeah? Um, my, my Memphis people, y'all email me. All the people, if y'all know a theater in your city that's a pretty big theater and you guys want us to do a showing, 
People are saying, um, Philly, holler at me about the theaters there. Uh, Memphis, holler at me about the theaters there. Up in the Bay, holler at me about the theaters up there. Miami, holler at me about the theaters down there. Let me know some big theaters out there that we can go ahead and get it popping in. Y'all email me, info at Tariq.LA. That is my email address, info at Tariq.LA. So going back to the situation with Fat Joe and um, the Democrats and they're parading him around. Um, again, like I we talked about this before, they had Fat Joe hosting the, the BET Awards and it just felt out of place. It, you know, they're crowbarring him in there to try to legitimize him as some type of spokesperson and ambassador to black society. And unfortunately, Fat Joe, is, he's not an ambassador. He's not a representative of black culture and black society. He's just not. But the thing is, they understand using Fat Joe, who has respect among black people in hip hop circles, they can use him to tether on to black society and say, hey, look, I'm out here with the black people. And by the way, what about the Latino community? You know, they can they can easily pivot onto the Latino community. It's very important for them to get Latinos who were clicked in with black people to do the dirty work. They get black people who's cool with us and then everything becomes black and Latino. Huh? So we, don't, we just don't really want to play that game. We don't want to play that game, ladies and gentlemen, and that's getting called out. And let me show you some of the the stuff that Fat Joe was out here doing with Kamala Harris. They had like a little sit down. Um, Kamala Harris had a little sit down with Fat Joe and hold on. Let me let me put this stuff out here. Hold on. Where we at? 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 Come on, fam. Where we at? Okay. Where's my thing? Hold on. Let me get my thing together. Y'all bear with me for one second. And let me show some of the, the footage of Kamala Harris kicking it with Fat Joe. All right, there we go. All right, so they got Kamala Harris out here with Fat Joe. All right, now let's look. Let's hear them really parading them around. Hey, everybody. Voila. Hey. Yo, Bay Area. Bay Area. <laughs> 106.1 KML, you remember that? I, that was a legendary right. radio thing. Chewy. If I got my record, Chewy right. Gum, let you me tell you something, Chewy Gum, if I got my record played there, I was big right. time. Chewy, Chewy in the you morning. You know, they call me the East Coast <laughs> E40. It's okay. No, no, that's All what right. they call me. <laughs> This is a video for another purpose. No, we we. we <laughs> That's like Chewy. I love Chewy, and I miss right, him too. Okay, so here let's we talk are. Talk about why I was. Lord, okay. Okay, okay. All right. Let me play some more. I was invited to moderate, and um, I leave everything for you. So we're here today because under our administration, Joe Biden and my administration, we have pardoned people who have been convicted of under the federal law for marijuana offenses for simple possession. And as far as I'm concerned, nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. So Fat Joe's with us here today to sure. talk about how the lives of the people who have been pardoned have been affected by this. And frankly, all the more the work that we have to do. We have done work that has also been about having the Small Business Association stop preventing people who've been previously incarcerated from getting loans. So now people who are previously incarcerated can get loans. We are making sure that as those who are incarcerated are coming out, that they are connected with Medicaid benefits before they leave. So when they come out, they can re-enter and do what they want to do in terms of living a productive life. Well, I'm honored to be here. I'm your moderator today. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you, Fat Joe. And we're going to make it happen. See you later. Okay, so this, ladies and gentlemen, is supposed to be their black outreach. People who smoke weed, they're going to let some people who got weed charges out of jail. Every time they talk about doing something for black folks, hey, criminal reform, that's for black folks. Mm. 
that whole backhanded compliment, that's a that's an insult. Do y'all understand that that's an insult? Every time it comes to pandering to black society, it's some criminal reform. We're not all criminals. I don't smoke weed. All of us don't smoke weed. All of us don't sell weed. So them parading this around as some kind of black agenda, because they love to say that, yeah, we got a black agenda, criminal reform, um, people who was in jail for weed. We, every, we, everybody ain't doing degenerate behavior. Many of us are upstanding citizens and we want our reparations, okay? We don't want to hear about who you let out of jail after you put everybody in. That crime bill got everybody locked up the way they're locked up, the Biden crime bill. So no, they're doing what a lot of the white supremacists do. The white supremacists sit up here and try to pat themselves on the back. Hey, it was us whites who stopped slavery before a lot of people now. We stopped slavery first. No, that's like sexually assaulting somebody and then bragging about pulling your genitals out. No, you don't get credit for pulling out after you violated people sexually for like a, a two or three centuries, then you stop and then want to get credit? No, it doesn't work like that. You're not going to get credit for um, stopping something that you orchestrated. This is hustle and flop. So now they had some kind of sit down meeting. It looked real clumsy talking about Fat Joe is going to be the moderator. And this looks real clumsy and out of place. Joe don't, didn't really know what he was talking about. This is what I'm saying. They, whenever it comes to our agenda, they go get a bunch of rappers who really don't know what they're talking about and rappers who are not really talking about a black agenda. This man is not black. So he's not going to talk about a black agenda. And this weird pandering it's backfiring. It's flopping. Now, this is them having a, a sit down. They're having a parlay. Fat Joe on the importance of marijuana offenses. Okay. Okay, hold on. Asking me to be the moderate, moderator, the end of the streets. Hear you out. You know, I'm very big on health care price tra transparency. But today, when the vice president calls me, I stop everything. So I came to hear this out, and I'm sure it's going to be a, a very impactful meeting to hear all your impactful stories. And uh, we're going to keep this intimate, as I was asked. So, press, we thank you for being here. But hold on, uh, I'm going to give a statement too. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank you, Fat Joe, for, for being here. Um, and, and taking the time, but really for your voice on so many critical issues. Um, in addition to the gift of your artistry, I thank you for being here. Asking me to be the moderator. Okay, 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 okay. Lord. So basically a big old nothing burger. This is a big old ass nothing burger. Waste of time. Um, weird pandering, yeah, and then Joe seems very uncomfortable and out of place. They put Joe in these situations where he's clearly uncomfortable. Even on the BET Awards, Joe seems uncomfortable because they crowbar him into this stuff with an agenda. You understand? Family, there's a lot of people out here who can articulate what's going on. They know that. There's a lot of people who can articulate what's really going on. The fact that they run and get rappers, and, and there are rappers who can articulate what's going on, but they don't get them. You understand? Yeah. Get an ice cube, but the ice cube is talking more like us. You understand? They don't know where the ice cube is going to get in there and say, hey, what about them reparations? They don't know what ice cube is going to say. They know Fat Joe is not going to say nothing about any reparations. They know that. He's not black. Not a foundation of black American. You think? So 
they know who to get to push the damn agenda. We're not playing these games. We're not playing these games whatsoever. Yeah, they, they're really going out of their way to try to make Fat Joe this hip-hop ambassador, like he's a spokesperson for hip-hop. And Fat Joe, and no shade to Fat Joe, he's, he's not an ambassador to hip-hop. You understand? Yeah, Vince Staples. Yeah, Vince, I met Vince at the gun shop out here at um, Redstone. Vince, real good guy, real smart dude who can articulate certain things. Yeah? You know? That's who they can get. There's a lot of people they can get to really articulate certain things. You, know, um, you can bring Killer Mike up there. But they don't know where Killer Mike, what bag he's going to come out of. They don't know, you know, where Killer Mike is going to come from with it. You know, they don't know what angle he's going to come through with. Yeah. But the thing is, man, they know how to get people who come from a non-FBA lineage to try to speak on certain things that um, that are pertinent to foundational black Americans. See, we're not playing that game. We want to have our own spokespersons and we do. We can articulate what we need and what's what's right and what's yeah a David Banner. Yeah, have a David Banner up there. Yeah, have a banner up there. Banner will give them the business. Yeah, they know who to get and who not to get. But listen, somebody might have Kodak Black no. And, and speaking of rappers, what's that guy um, who's on, he's on Joe Budden's show? The Queen's Flip guy? And shout out to the Joe Budden show. I, I like the Joe Budden show. I like what they do over there. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of people got on that Queen's Flip guy's bumper because he was talking about reparations. And this guy is Caribbean. The Queen's Flip guy is a, he's Jamaican and Haitian. I think his, his mama is Haitian or dad, somebody's Haitian. Either the mom is Haitian or the dad is Haitian. And the one, one parent is Jamaican, the other dad is, uh, other parent is Haitian. Yeah, then he apologized. Yeah, he did apologize because um, people were getting on his bumper. Yeah, the Queens flip guy. He, he just voluntarily popped up on the Fat Joe podcast talking about, we ain't getting no reparations. Hold on, let me play that clip. Let me play that clip of Queen's Flip. Hold on. Let me play that clip of Queen's Flip. Here it is, right here. Queen's Flip just out the blue, all right, just popped off. He was like, yeah, by the way, we ain't getting no reparations. Hold on, listen. Queen's Flips, <laughs> he said, we ain't getting reparations. <laughs> we ain't getting it. Us and we. <laughs> and the brother's just not qualified to get reparations one way or the other. And he knows that. The man is Jamaican and Haitian. And that's, and, and, and I understand he's apologized. Let me find the thing where he, I'll I find that in a minute. Somebody help me find the, um, the apology video. Hold on. Let me find that, but hold on. Hold on. Where's the apology video? He apologized for saying that because pe people got on his bumper. Okay, I think this is the, I got the apology. I'll play the apology in a second, but here's the thing. Listen, I got the apology. But family, listen, this has been the problem. This has been the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Um... This is why we've delineated. This is why delineation was so important because for a long time, you've had people come among us whenever we start talking about getting tangibles as foundational black Americans. Every time we talk about getting tangibles, we get people among us that, man, we need to stop asking for stuff from the government. 
We ain't, we ain't going to get nothing. So we need to stop this begging and pull ourselves up by our bootstrap because we need to leave these white people alone. And then what happens is those people come in and just kind of spoil the energy and, and, and dissipate the energy. And we've seen that over and over again. And now we started to recognize who actually are these people doing this? Every time we talk about getting reparations and standing up for something we're supposed to get, we're looking at these people and then we start seeing a pattern. Like, hey, man, we we don't need no reparations. Then hold on, wait, 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 hold on. Where, nigga, where are you from? Like, where, where are you from? We start looking into people's background and we're like, wait a minute, you're not even, your lineage ain't even from here. You're not even qualified to get reparations. And the thing is, even that kind of language is, is a defeatist type of language. Just that whole, man, we ain't going to get nothing. That ain't from our spirit. That's not from the foundational black American spirit of Majara. That ain't from our spirit where we talk about what we can't get done. Man, these white people ain't going to give us nothing. We don't really think like that. Let, let's keep it above. That's not our disposition. Now, foreigners, they think like that because a lot of them, they come from a mindset where they bow down to the white supremacists. They're not challenging white supremacy. That whole throw in the towel, defeatist mindset, that ain't, that ain't us. That's not the Majora spirit. That's how I can tell this. They ain't from here. Man, they ain't going to give us nothing. Dude, they don't want to give us nothing, but they going to give it up. No, there's a big difference from them not wanting to and them doing it. We know that they don't want to do it. We're not bothered by them not wanting to do it. See, if you come from a Caribbean background or whatever, or an African background, and I'm not shading my African and Caribbean brothers and sisters, but again, y'all look at white supremacy a little bit different, and you look at um, empowering yourself a little bit different. Because the fact that a lot of y'all had to leave and y'all kind of fled your homeland, y'all don't really have that same energy. You kind of have a throw in the towel mindset. I can't do nothing. I can't fix my homeland. I got to bounce. So yeah, when when Brother Queen Flip said, man, we need to focus on other things like building our communities. Are you building Haiti? Are you building Jamaica? Because you know, a lot of these people say a lot of contradictory things about, hey, we, we need to build, but just forget about focusing on some damn reparation we need to focus on building our communities but you, you you come from a fleeing lineage you come from a lineage that fled also i think it's very disingenuous for, for somebody from a a non-fba lineage to talk about what we ain't going to get and our tax dollars are going to so many damn immigrants now Right now, our tax dollars are going to immigrants. I don't want nobody from an immigrant background telling us what we ain't going to get while our money is going to them. They're coming over here getting forms of reparations and they're non-citizens. Don't tell us what we ain't going to damn get. All we have to do is stay focused and make sure these tax dollars are going to be reversed coming back this way. All we have to do is stay focused. We're going to get what we're supposed to get. Oh, we're going to get reparations. We don't know when exactly. It's coming. We're going to get them reparations. Let's be very clear. Listen, we don't go by what the white supremacists don't want to damn do. And we don't go by what defeatist mindset people who had to come from fleeing backgrounds, we don't go by them either. We don't take that advice. Because if we did what they did and threw in the towel, hell, we'd be out here making rat sandwiches like they're doing. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to shade. I'm not, I'm not trying to shade. I'm not trying to shade. But family, during the mid-1800s, 
There were some Sambos out here talking about, man, we ain't going to get no freedom. We ain't going to get no freedom. We might as well just work and just pray for the Lord to do something later on in the afterlife. And we fought and got that damn freedom. And then after that, they had we had folks out here, man, we ain't going to get no equal rights and equal citizenship. These white people don't want to give us that. We might as well stop. But we got out here, created a grassroots movement to get the 13th and 14th Amendment popping so that we had birthright citizenships on, citizenship on the books. Meaning that on paper, at least, we get equal rights, equal protection on paper, at least, even though we don't really get it still. But even on paper, just to have it on the paper, on paper. During the 1960s, when we said, hey, man, we're going to have to get these civil rights popping. We're going to have to get some, some voter rights popping. We're going to have to get these racist signs down. That's going to have to come down. You had defeatist Negroes. Man, we ain't going to stop these Jim Crow laws. Man, these white people ain't about to stop that. We might as well just worry about what we finna do. And we got out here in the streets, got the civil rights bill passed, and then said, hey, let's get an immigration bill passed so we can get other black folks over here as reinforcement and other marginalized people of color over here as reinforcement. And we got that, that passed too. The immigration bill came after the civil rights bill and we were responsible for that. When they had those restrictive covenant laws where we had to live in certain neighborhoods and we weren't allowed in other neighborhoods and all of that stuff, you had the Sambos, man, we ain't about to get equal housing. Man, we can't live over there in the suburbs. Man, we need to, man, we need to just stop. Stop all this fighting. We need to stop all this running up and down in these streets, causing all this ruckus. Got these churn out here burning up everything. We need to just sit down somewhere and go to church. But 1968, we hit the streets, got them civil rights laws and fair housing laws passed, removed those restrictive covenants, got it popping. We never taken no for an answer. We get we can get done whatever we want to get done. Whatever we focus on, we're going to get it popping. Whatever we focus on, we're going to make it happen. And right now, we're focusing on reparations. And people see that we're laser focused with it. And eventually they're going to have to break bread. They're going to have to give us what we're supposed to get. Because when we focus on something, let me tell you something. And this is the law of the universe. Whatever you focus on, if there's a problem, all you have to do is focus at, on that problem. All you got to do is look at it. Just focus at that problem. If you focus on a problem long enough, the solution is going to come. See, they don't even want us looking at the problem. That's the thing, because they know a solution is going to come. They know we're going to figure out how to get these damn reparations. And again, part of this immigration thing, them flooding the zone with all of, all of these immigrants, that's to undermine our reparations. That's to undermine our numbers. That's to bring a whole bunch of people in here so that they can be a new a voting block. And that's not really working like the Democrats wanted to work. And the Republicans too, because the Republicans, they co-sign this stuff too. You think? But we're focusing on what we need to focus and we're going to get what we need to get. Now let me play the Queen's flip. He did an apology. Let me play the apology video. Now this is him apologizing because everybody got on his bumper. Hold on. Yeah, I got something to say. What's up? Am I allowed? <laughs> no, listen, last part, I said something that may have came off insensitive uh, about reparations. I've been getting attacked all week this week on Twitter. You ain't fraud them up? No, 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 you can't fraud them up. I said something about reparations, about black people, we not getting reparations, let it go. 
They, you know, they proceeded to remind me that, yo, Flip, you Caribbean, you're not black. Fuck you. They was cursing me out. And I did some research and I realized it came off insensitive. And I understand. My point I was just making was that I feel like when it comes to reparations that the government plays with black people. Right? And that's just how I feel. Japanese got their reparations. The Jewish people got their reparations. Native Americans got their reparations. But when it comes to us, we didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, that's how I felt. But I understand. I just want to acknowledge the people. I, I get it. Salute to the FBA and ADOS and all you. There's no smoke. I feel how I feel, but I do not want to come off insensitive to your feelings or what your ancestors or what you are owed because of what your ancestors went through. Well, nigga, you could have tweeted that, right? No, I just had to say it. Not because I said it on the pod. I said it on the pod. And don't do that. He keep, he keep in that same energy. Yeah, don't dismiss me, nigga. They told Flip he don't qualify for the reparations. <laughs> you read that? You the back, nigga. They told him that for days. Hey, big dog, when it comes, it ain't coming your way. They, was on my, they got mad at us. They was on my ass. How y'all let this nigga get this bullshit off and it don't even apply to him? I'm yeah. like, they was on my ass. ass. I forgot. Uh, duh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got something to say. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, if people got on this bumper, which people correctly say, hey, it's not coming your way anyway, so you chiming in on it. Yeah, and, and don't uh, ADOS is dead. ADOS is a non factor. That's a that was a, that was an LGBT organization. So please don't compare Foundational Black Americans, which is a lineage, to a dead, defunct LGBT organization ran by a red bone stud. That's please don't include us in that failure. You know, ADOS is a dead brand. Please don't include us in that. It's a dead brand, ladies. Please. I, 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 sometimes people just kind of bring up ADOS just, you know, on GP. That's a dead brand. <laughs> don't nobody talk about ADOS no more. ADOS is such a dead brand right now. ADOS been canceled since 2021. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, ADOS is not even active no more. Um, strappy. <laughs> Ain't she delivering for Postmates or some shit? I don't know. It's a, it's a dead-ass brand. It's such a non-factor. You dig? It's a non-factor. It's it's a nothing burger, ladies and gentlemen. You dig? Shout out to Joe. Somebody, somebody said I should go on Joe's podcast. I'd love to go on. I like that, Joe. Those guys are funny. Those guys are funny. They, 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 they spit some good stuff. What's up, son? How you doing, Mugs? What's up? I see you, my my boys. Um, but uh, no, 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 no. Ados is an organization with leaders. All right, with a with a stud and a, and a frog for a leader. <laughs> Foundational Black Americans is not an organization. There are no leaders. It's only a lineage, lineage, lineage only. Foundation of Black Americans, when you say that, you're strictly talking about 43 million black people who descended from freedmen and slaves in America, the people who are the foundation of this country. You're speaking about a lineage. When you talk about ADOS, you're talking about a little haggard stud and some LGBT followers that fell off three years ago. <laughs> yeah, ADOS is the new rock aware. It's, nobody's wearing that no more. ADOS is the P. Miller of movements. It's the P. Miller clothing. Uh, it was a short run, but now nah. it's P. Miller, P. Miller clothing. Right. It's a dead movement. Oh, my goodness. Man. But listen. But listen, and he mentioned, you know what? He mentioned Native Americans got theirs. So yeah, a lot of people got their reparations. A lot of people get their reparations. Um, and then you have the $5 Native Americans getting their reparations. Um, here's a new thing going on with some of these $5 Indians. There's a narrative now. I think they're trying to finesse some type of hate crime bill so they can get some more paper. Where they're sitting up here pretending that black people are attacking them on on, to on, let you know. on reservations. They're coming up with these cockamamie stories 
about how some black people are coming to reservations with guns threatening them, but they ain't never got no video of it. There's never any proof of this. These $5 Indians are just hopping online with these narratives with zero proof because it ain't happening. That's why. But listen to these weird stories that they're saying. Listen, hold on. Hold on. I'm here to let you know a little secret, which won't be a secret anymore. So those supposed black aboriginals who are pushing erasure on indigenous culture and claiming that they are the originals have been going into native land reservations and assaulting verbally and pushing aggressive uh, assault assaulting verbally okay okay that's in reservations a international violation on human rights we have now sent in our information and all of their videos and all of their abuse and their insensitive tactics that they have used, along with white supremacy, we've included black supremacy because this is going to stop. And they are committing human rights. There's no black supremacy. Who are these groups? Rights violations. Now that our women and our children are coming up missing, and these individuals are showing up on reservations with weapons and committing violent crimes and verbal abuse. She sounds like she's making this up as she go along. We have now taken it one step further. So anybody who is caught doing what they are doing will be included in this situation as well, because we are going after them now internationally under our right to do so as sovereign beings. Black supremacy. Okay. Yeah, this, they, they are not going after no white supremacy because these are $5 Indians. These people are white themselves. So now they're trying to make up some black boogeyman scenario. Told them to leave us alone, but they didn't want to. They thought that this was a game. And uh, we have plenty of... We're going after black supremacy and white supremacy, international human rights violations for the missing women and children. What the hell is she talking about? They're just throwing a whole bunch of stuff up against the wall with a bunch of bogus accusations and a bunch of bogus innuendo like... She's almost trying to imply that these boogeyman black people are kidnapping their kids. She's just saying a bunch of stuff. Videos of them threatening. We have plenty of videos of them saying when they come for us. And uh, yeah, so all of it is being sent out internationally now under a human rights violation. So brothers and sisters, be prepared because Armageddon has begun. Okay, this is all captured in the letter. It comes to my attention that these black Hebrew Israelites went to Rosebud, my reservation. During okay, now it was some black Hebrew Israelites. So the, the woman before said it was some black aboriginals. Now this woman said it was some black Hebrew Israelites. And he, he, Hebrew Israelites are not black aboriginals. So who, they ain't got no video or none of this stuff. Hold on. The children's Easter and hunt handing out these ridiculous flyers promoting the genocide of indigenous peoples right on our own reservations. Not only that, they showed up armed and were flashing their pieces around just so nobody, you know, would approach them and try to kick them off. Where are our men? From what I hear, there were only two men there. The police responded slowly. This can't happen. We need to stand together. We are Lakota. We are strong. We are warriors. Woman, please, you are a Karen. All right, you're not a warrior. You're a Karen and a $5 Indian. You're a whole white woman. Our ancestors would never allow this. Get them the hell off of our reservations. Warn the other reservations that this shit is going on. Ban them permanently. Who are they to go to a children's Easter egg hunt promoting indigenous genocide, false narrative, 
and toting weapons with their children. And they were obviously prepared to use them. Okay. Boy, these $5 Indians are doing the most. They're doing some um, um, $5 Karen behavior. This is $5 Karen behavior. So they're just, they're making up narratives. They haven't even fleshed the lie out yet. So again, these people are running a finesse. And here's the thing. A lot of those Native American tribes... You got all of these $5 Indians in there, and many of them owe the black freedmen, by the way. They owe a lot of the black freedmen. And black people, let me say this, because here's another thing. This is another problem, family. Because foundational black Americans are looking at our aboriginal status here. We're looking at our aboriginal lineage here. I think this is them trying to get in front of it, to act like they're being threatened. Because now this whole thing about us wanting to go back to the motherland. No, no. We're like, no, 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 no. This is our land right here. So now the $5 Indians trying to step up. No, no, no. You white. Native Americans were never white. All right. You're straight up and down white. There were black aboriginals here. We have more of a claim to the land than these white $5 Indians. You see? They're trying to get in front of that. Us claiming our foundational and aboriginal status. You see? Now they're trying to figure out how to get in front of it. Oh, they're trying to erase us. Who's us? You're white. You're European. Yeah. So yeah, th this is them trying to get in front of it. You see all of these little different groups, you know, they're threatened by us not latching on to the foreign narrative because see, they sat up here and made our lineage comparative to foreigners, African American. That's comparative to Italian American and Japanese American and Mexican American and Indian American. No, no, we're, we're not comparable to any groups. We are foundational black American and no other group can claim to be foundational, especially these $5 Indians. When they show up looking like um, Justin Bieber, you can't sit here and claim you're foundational to anything. You're a white guy. You're a white woman. And the Native American spoke against pale-skinned people. You're a whole Karen. You see? But we, we still look the same. There were black Aboriginal people here, according to all the descriptions, according to the paintings and the narratives and the archaeology. Yeah? So yeah, us claiming our heritage and claiming the land and not letting them play us off as foreigners, boy, they feel a certain way about that. So they want to get in front of this thing. But we almost got 7,000 people in here. We are in here heavy. Everybody give us a thumbs up. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed. Hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed. But yeah. We're not going to play that game. We're not playing that game whatsoever. And family, what the dominant society wants or don't want, that's inconsequential. Look, our well-being and the things we get is not contingent upon what the dominant society wants. Because here's the thing. No matter what we do, they're going to complain. Family, if we sat up and just sat in the housing projects and just lollygagged all day, they'll be up there, well, oh my God, look at you guys. You guys are so non-productive. Why don't you blacks just pull yourselves up by your bootstraps? Stop hanging on the corners. Stop living in the ghetto. Oh God, just do something constructive. There's so many opportunities out here, dude. Just pull yourselves up. OK, now, when we pull ourselves up and we become successful in corporate America, 
let's say we pull ourselves up, we become business owners and community leaders. We pull ourselves up and become very astute scientists and um, mathematicians and teachers and and engineers and let's say we do become successful what do they do oh my god look at him he's a nasa scientist that goddamn di man affirmative damn action oh god that critical race theory dude critical race theory is going to be the death of us dude they get to hollering DEI and critical race theory. It's damned if we do, damned if we don't. There was a brother recently. He put up a picture. This brother um, works for NASA. Is a black man, works for NASA, and he's still rocking his dreads. He's rocking his dreads, and the white supremacists, boy, they, they're crying foul that this brother rocking his dreads, working for NASA, Oh, yeah, you remember the brother? Yeah, you, you heard about this. This brother working for NASA. So don't let them run that pull yourself up by your bootstrap. This brother worked for NASA, and these white supremacists lost their mind. They were hating on the dude, going and talking about his locks, because he's still rocking his locks. And the brother came from the hood. The brother's a damn Na NASA engineer. Let me see if I can find the story on that. They've been whining and complaining about this brother ever since he posted his picture. Oh, God, D-E-I, dude. D-E-I. He didn't do it on his own merit, dude. Hold on. Brother Tyrone, that's his name. Hold on. Let me um, find that clip of the brother. Yeah, the brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, look at this racist website right here. Look at what they had to say. The brother... Still rocking his locks. Look at what this racist, this is BIPOC doing racist. This is a racist website. Did I ever tell you that they're always black first, even the good ones? So this brother here, Tyrone, he's rocking his locks. And when they see a brother rock the locks, oh no, he, he's identifying with black culture. So the brother works for NASA and they're complaining. Because yeah? he's still rocking his locks. He's representing his culture. Hold on, where's that story? Let me find the um, let me find the the news story on it. Okay, hold on. Uh, let check this out. Late with us, we appreciate you tonight, and we have some great topics and issues to talk about. Now, the sky's the limit if you don't stop reaching for that dream. We learned that from our next guest. Tyrone Jacobs is one of NASA's newest engineers, and his official headshot for the agency has gone viral on Twitter. AKA X and around the country. A lot of people have been praising the picture because of how Jacobs is proudly rocking his locks in that photo. But there's much more to Jacobs than just his hair. He's overcome a lot in his own personal life to get here where he is now. He joins us to, on the studio tonight. On the shout out to this brother. I'm very proud of this brother, man. Very, very proud of this brother. Factor on Sensor. Good to see you, sir. And congratulations. Thank you. So when you posted that photo, did you ever expect to get the response you did? Not at all. Um, when I posted it, I thought I would get, you know, a little bit of love. You know, some congratulations. This is a nice picture. You look nice. Yeah, like a little bit. But to see it going and where it went now in present day, like I totally did not expect it. And it's, it's a very overwhelming feeling. Um, I'm still overwhelmed. Like I can't even process... There's no work. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, let me fast words in the dictionary to process. I, I message in my story around the bad things and the hardships because I, I personally believe I've had more darkness in my life than I've had light or success. But looking at me, you would think it's the opposite way. Mm -hmm. And so I want people to know that no matter what you go through, no matter what you endure, no matter what challenges come your way, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, whatever the challenge is, you can get through it and you can overcome it and greater days are ahead. And you said back as a kid, I think you were in the sixth, fifth or sixth grade or five or six years old. Yeah. You ran into a guy who saw you with your backpack. Yeah. Now this is heavy right here. This part is heavy. Walking yeah. down the street and yeah. he said, you're going to be someone. That's right. That guy eventually died, but yeah. that stuck with you. Yeah, it stuck with me. Yeah, he um, ended up, um, he was actually um, fresh out of uh, jail trying to get his life together. And um, yeah, he ended up 
being killed like a month later after that. And that was very uh, saddening and unfortunate to hear. But yeah, there was one day I was uh, getting off the school bus, walking home, he was outside. He saw me pull me to the side, he said, hey man, like you need to stay away from this stuff over here. Right. But I see something in you, like you're going to be something. I don't know what it is. I don't know what you're gonna be, but I can look at you right now and tell one day you're gonna become something. And he ended up passing away, so. Now family, that's big right there. Cause I've, to I've talked about that a lot. Um, it's one of the street rules of foundation of black American culture. I've said this many, many times. That, that was a very powerful part, right? What he said. Um, whenever you see a story about um, a college kid or somebody getting hurt, because I remember in Atlanta some years ago, there was a, a girl in college got killed, black girl, and a black dude killed her. I said, wait, that nigga ain't from here. I said, wait a minute, because people were like, oh, damn, this nigga killed that sister. I said, wait, time out. I can almost guarantee that nigga ain't from here. That's one of the, that's a rule of the streets, man. That's one of the street rules. We don't, street cats, you keep our young and brightest, you keep them away. You keep them away from that stuff. I told people for years, real street dudes, when you see young, bright kids who try to come around or you see them kind of in the hood or whatever, you kind of make sure they don't come around the bullshit. You make sure they don't come around. I've been telling people that for years. You make sure that when you see them try to come out on the block, turn your ass around and get up out of here. Don't come out here. This ain't for you. You already on the right path, man. Don't bring your ass out here with what's going on over here. We need you over there. We need you as a lawyer. We need you as an engineer. We need you as a scientist. We already got enough street niggas over here. We don't need you. Get your ass over there and do what you supposed to do. Real talk, a real street cat will not let somebody come out there on the block knowing that they have other options like that. I see it all the time. We should see it all the time. Yeah? Don't come out here with that. Especially cats that's been in jail. They know what it is. They don't want you going through that. They look, hey, I'm already in this thing, man. I'm telling you this ain't the business. Get out of here with that shit, homie. The real street dudes will, will get you up out of there. They'll steer you away from that. Yeah? The real street dudes will steer you away from it. And shout out to that brother. And the brother died eventually. Like he said, the brother said, hey, man, the brother got out of jail and saw him. Man, you're going to be somebody. Don't come out here. You Don't even come on out here, bro. This ain't for you. I'm telling you, it ain't going nowhere, man. We need you to help get us up out of here. We need you to help create institutions so that we ain't got to be out here in these damn streets like this. That's how a lot of the street cats think. Yeah. So shout out to that young brother, man. Very proud of him. Very proud of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of the black dudes, yeah, black dudes are protectors. The black men are protectors. Even the street dudes, man. Even the street guys, they're protectors. I'm telling you, dude, even at the museum. I talk about this all the time. Street cats come up there all the time um, supporting the museum. Street dudes come up there to the museum all the time, dropping off brown paper bags to me all the time because they love what it represents. The, the, the streets of L.A., they've been extremely, extremely, extremely supportive of the museum because it's a, it's a place where it's neutral. Everybody can come. You can have a good time and all the BS is left at the door. So everybody can come in and it's a neutral vibe. People can come in and enjoy themselves and you can get educated and it's just a real positive vibe. So cats are always dropping brown paper bags off. I had somebody drop, somebody dropped off and I, st I still got some of the damn money. Somebody dropped off like about $1,500 in ones. <laughs> Family, do you know how hard it is to do something with a bunch of ones? <laughs> Somebody dropped off like $1,500 in ones, in $1 bills, in a brown paper bag. Yeah? <laughs> so, yeah, 
They they love it. They love what it represents. Yes, we are going to have a movie showing. Yeah, we're going to have an early screening of Microphone Check at the Hidden History Museum. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it wasn't a stripper. It was a dude. It wasn't a stripper. It was a dude. But hey, 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 Brother Tyreek, man. Yeah. He gave it to me. Man, keep on doing what you're doing, player. All right. He gave me the brown paper bag. And it was... $1,500 in ones. All right, there you go. I don't know. I don't know where he got them from. I don't know and don't, didn't ask. He, he probably got it from his um, science lab. He might be a scientist. He might work for Pfizer or something. I don't know. The brother, you know, the brother might have had a bunch of ones and he was doing experiments on quantum physics or something. I don't know. But shout out to the brother who gave me the bag full of ones. All right. Yeah. But um, but again, the, the brother working for NASA, very proud of that brother, man. And again, the white supremacists, don't let them fool you with that pull yourself up. And when you pull yourself up, they're going to complain too. Because see, the brother's still rocking his dreads. So that means he identifies with black culture. See, that's the thing. When black people get into some type of corporate entity, you're supposed to leave your blackness at the door. If if we let you in, don't be too black now. You know, it's that type of thing. They want you to come in with your eyes bucking. You know? And you know, that hair, that hair is your antenna, antenna to the Majora energy, that Majora spirit, it hits that hair. You dig? Your hair is your antenna. <clears throat> your hair is your antenna. Yeah? You get a lot of energy with that hair. That's why they're always trying to do things to mess around with our damn hair. That's where your energy comes from. Your energy, that it, 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 it draws your energy. Yeah? Your energy goes to different places. Your melanin and everything else in your pineal gland. But your hair, it, it helps facilitate a lot of that energy, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to understand what's going on out here. Shout out to everybody in the room. We're in here heavy. We're in here heavy. But yeah, the, the thing is, you know, yeah, uh, update about the situation with the, um, the um, out there in the St. Louis County area where the um, girls were fighting and the, the black girl... Marnice had to defend herself from the white girl, um, Kylie, Kaylee, and they're still trying to portray Kaylee as a victim. Um, the family created a GoFundMe, and then I promoted the GoFundMe, and the white supremacists had the GoFundMe taken down. So I'm going to talk to the family and see what other options they want to do. I know they're trying to get this lawyer out there, and they said it's a white lawyer, and they said he's pretty good, and he's connected, and he's kind of expensive. So I'm trying to see what's going on with that to help the family out with that. I'm going to talk to them again tomorrow to see what we can do to help get that child out of jail. She's in like a little juvenile facility right now, from what I understand. And this is an honor roll student. She shouldn't be in there. These white supremacists got this thing where they're supposed to, they can do to anybody what they feel and nobody's supposed to, um, regulate them. It's that royalist mindset that Dr. Neely Fuller talks about. White supremacy is based on the royalist system where the royal people can't do no wrong. And the white supremacists, they've made the whiteness a part of some type of perverted royalty where they can just get away with murder and nobody is going to check them on it. Yeah, the black lawyers, my man, the black lawyers out here, and again, I don't want to sit up here and just beat up on black lawyers, but man, I don't know what these black lawyers are doing out here. Um, you black lawyers, I don't want to see y'all do these little stylish photo shoots. Um, we need black lawyers to, to come through. People got money for you. It ain't about doing anything for free or People got money. We just need people who are black to step up and just handle shit for the community and spend the money with you. We need you to handle it. 
black lawyers nowadays, nationwide, slipping. That's the long and short of it. I'm dealing with a Latina lawyer out here that, that's giving me problems, some stuff with the film. Got this Latina lawyer out here fleecing us because, um, you know, we're getting insurance for the film and, um, you know, we got to have a lawyer watch it and then sign off on everything. And this, this Latina woman is just fleecing left and right, doing a little shady shit. Um, man, and, and that's because we got to go to these other people because we don't have any black lawyers to go to. We got to try to find black lawyers and they're hard to find and they don't step up. Yeah, the John, when Johnny Cochran left, damn, he killed a lot of y'all spirits. Yeah, nobody stepped up and took the mantle of Johnny Cochran. Man. Good freaking grief, man. Yeah, a lot of these lawyers, man, I don't know what they, yeah, somebody said a lot of them are not FBA. But no, a lot of them, man, I don't know what their deal is. Black lawyers, y'all out here smashing Thonny Willis and doing all of this weird ass stuff. Damn, we got the Fonny Willis's and little bad built Fonny out here smashing each other and just doing weirdo ass stuff. I don't know what the deal is with the black lawyers out here, man. We we need black lawyers majorly. Back in the Jim Crow days, we had black lawyers who could who could look into paperwork and you know, we got Ben Crump, but Ben Crump is, you know, he's a settlement lawyer. Yeah? Now, who's that follow the, yeah, yeah. Man, black lawyers, I don't know what y'all doing out here, man. I don't know what y'all doing out here. Yeah. And people got money for you. But a, a black, lot of black lawyers out here are scared. And I think a lot of them are non-FBA. So they're like, damn all that. You know, we're looking out for us. Every lawyer for themselves, yeah. But shit, these alt-right dudes, they got all types of lawyers on who do things on spec, just do things on GP. Yeah? Then you see these black lawyers out here doing photo shoots. I saw some of these lawyers, they all dressed in black with briefcases doing all of these old performative-ass photo shoots. And man... What what laws and what 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 cases are y'all handling, man? What cases are y'all getting popped off, man? What case laws are y'all getting popping, huh? Damn all these little photo shoots and cats showing out and eh. come on, black lawyers. We we just need the black lawyers to step the hell up because there's a lot of cases out here and we got money. We got to give the money to white people and Latinas and Latinos. Like this, I'm dealing with a janky ass Latina lawyer out here now, and I don't give a damn. She's probably listening. I hope she's listening. Who's supposed to sign off on some stuff with the film, and she's using that shit as a damn finesse. Yeah, man. But I digress. But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. But again, with the black girl, we're trying to get her as much help as we can because the white supremacists are sitting up here making excuses. They know that that Kylie girl, the white girl, Kylie, Kaylee, I'm sorry, instigated the thing. We showed videos of Kaylee jumping other girls. There's videos of Kaylee bragging about beating up girls. So this girl has a reputation of beating up and jumping on folks because she knows her whiteness is going to protect her. And the whole narrative, the white supremacy, oh, it doesn't matter. She uh, she was almost killed. Oh, nobody, the girl wasn't almost killed. The black girl defended herself. And even the liberal white folks are, well, you know, you, 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 the black girl did take it too far. Stop it. Y'all didn't say that about Kyle Rittenhouse. Listen, you know what's funny about the white supremacists, even with the liberal ones? They don't really ever call out white supremacy. Notice that the dominant society, they don't really ever call out white supremacy or anti-black racism. It's always our reaction to white supremacy that gets called out. 
You understand? It's never, hey, hey, fellow white people, let's stop all this anti-black racism. It's never that. It's never, hey, how, how about we stop all of this racism? It's never that. It's always they come to us when somebody, a white supremacist attacks us or does something to us, they come to us like, oh, well, now, hey, well, that's two wrongs don't make a right now. Well, huh? when we get harmed by white supremacists, it's never going to them and say, hey, why don't y'all stop? They come to us now, hey, hey, now let's not fight hate with hate. You know, let's not, don't, don't you retaliate now. The hell? We get beat down by a white supremacists. Well, well, come on now. You, you know, sometimes the Bible says you turn the other cheek now. Now, when, when, when they go low, you go high. Well, why, why my reaction got to be regulated? Everything has to, our reaction has to be regulated. So we get attacked by white supremacists. Well, well, you, you don't, 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 don't kill them now. No, don't beat them down too much. Now, when you, you, when you subdue them, all right, now you got them subdued. Now you stop. Now don't go too far now. Why isn't the narrative, hey, why don't you stop attacking those blacks? It's always our reaction has to be regulated. No. The hell out of here. Huh? Get the whole hell out of here. And family. We better understand how liberal white supremacy works. The liberal white supremacists, don't be fooled by them. Do not be fooled by liberal white supremacists. Black folks are fooled easily. You better watch what they're doing because they'll sit out here and make it seem like they're complimenting you, but they're not really complimenting you. They're not complimenting you at all. Like there's a thing on um, TikTok and social media where these white women are showing this weird admiration for black men. We love you, black men. We love you, black king. There's a, there's a few white women. Their whole pages are about them sitting up praising black kings. Oh, we love you, black king. Hey, black king. Shout out to all my beautiful black kings out there. And some Negroes get fooled by that. Don't be fooled by that. Y'all got to watch that stuff. Look at this. Let me show you something. This is an example. There's a lot of these white women who do this on TikTok and social media. This whole we love the black kings. I love you, black man. 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 Black man, I love you. Now, one sister in entire video. I guess it's safe to say the black women don't love you, black man. Okay, now I don't know who this coon is. Now, this is this is just cooning. I don't know what this. Okay, there's always a coon who's going to sit up there and go for the okie doke. Let me tell you something. These white women doing this, that's very performative. Don't be fooled by that, brothers, because there's a lot of white women who do these videos. Um, the purpose of the video is not really to show love to you. Yes, yeah, fetishizing. It's yeah, fetishizing. The, the narrative is to insult white men. You understand? That's some get back to white men. That's really what the narrative is. So it's not so much they're giving you props. It's really to say F you to white men. It's just kind of a performative um, dissing to white men. And some of them do it um, along with white men. I want y'all to understand, there's some white men who like for them to do that. So it's like a cuck hole thing. There's some white dudes. Uh, let me tell you something, man. Let's keep it a buck. Y'all don't understand how these, these white supremacists are kind of sick. There's some white dudes who like that, that these white women have these black fetishes because it's like the white man likes to be humiliated. It's a, they get a sexual turn on for being humiliated. I'll give you an example. Here's another video of a, a white woman doing that. It's a black man she's saying that to, calling him a black king. Now watch this. This is what I'm talking about. 
white woman with that black king stuff. Hold on. Are you aware that you're a black king? Uh, no. You're not aware that you're a black king? Uh, you just made me aware. I'm sorry. See? And that's part of the problem. As that black man, especially in this country, you don't realize that you're a black king, and you are. Thank you. Would you be at all uncomfortable if my beta sissy cuck back here showed his respect and bent down on all fours and kissed the ground in front of your feet or your feet themselves to show his respect? You're obviously his superior. So. I don't mind. I do not mind. Thank you. Our little bit on all fours. See, this is what I'm saying, dude. It's performative. A lot of this stuff is real performative, dude. It's very performative. So don't be fooled by that. Don't be fooled by that at all. All right? Because these white women have these so-called black fetishes, and then when they get older, well, you know what? That fetish I, I, I said I had, it wasn't really a fetish. The niggas drugged me. I was actually drugged. And they made me do things. You know? They'll flip. They'll be the main ones flipping. Don't be fooled by that. Please don't be fooled by that. Hell, Kylie, the Kylie, the Kaylee girl who was up here fighting, she, she was one of them, I love the black man. She got a black boyfriend. Now look, Team white supremacy is supporting her. She's getting all types of GoFundMe money for a black girl having to defend herself from Kylie, from Kaylee, whatever her name is. Yeah, don't be fooled by that. Yeah. Man. So we got to watch the stuff that's going on out here, man. We got to watch the stuff that's going on out here. Boy, we got a lot of people in here. Boy, we got, it's easing up to almost, what, seven? We got over 7,000 people in here tonight. Um, before I proceed, don't forget to get the book, Hidden Heroes from A to Z. Hidden Heroes from A to Z. You get this at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Get this at the Hidden History Museum website and give your weekly and monthly donation to the Hidden History Museum, ladies and gentlemen. Get your monthly donation to the Hidden History Museum at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. We're going to have an event there next month. We're going to have another comedy show. I'm trying to see some of the comics we should bring in. Um, I'm trying to see some of the comics we should bring in um, for April. We're going to do an April event. I'm going to keep people posted on that. I keep people posted on that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and by the way, get your root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Your book just arrived. That's beautiful. Um, now speaking of white women, did y'all see the clip of Kirstie Alley? Kirstie Alley, who's an actress, I think she died a few years ago. She died, right? So Kirstie Alley did an interview with Barbara Walters years ago. And she talked about how her parents passed away. And this is very interesting. Now, peep this out. She talked about how her parents passed in a car accident. Now, family, peep this. This is, this is heavy. And then peep her reaction. Peep her reaction. That's the pivotal thing. Now, listen to this. This is Kirstie Alley talking about her parents passing. Hold on. And dad is dying. And, not, and mom and dad have been in a car wreck and mother is dead. And dad is dying. And I, of course, was falling apart. But I knew, all I knew was I had to get there. And I got there, my sister and I, we were all sitting in this waiting room and we were sobbing. And as I'm crying, I said, my sister's here and I wasn't looking at her, but I said, where were they going? And she said, to a Halloween party. And I said, what were they dressed as? Why would you ask this? Why would you? And she said, the odd couple. And I said, oh, I'm thinking, what odd couple? Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon? Well, what were their costumes exactly? She 
said mom was a black girl and dad was a Ku Klux Klan member. <laughs> I mean, started laughing. And the whole family, I guess, had heard this conversation and we all started laughing. And it was the greatest tribute that you could give my mother. What? You know, and I really realized that through us, she existed. You know, she, you know, she would, she would continue, and that she had left us with this wonderful sense of humor and this wonderful ability to, to laugh and cry at the same time. So I, I felt closer to her then than I ever felt to her in my life. What the hell? What? Her mama and dad were dressed as a black girl and a clan member, and we just laughed. Oh, my my good old mom. Oh, my mom had a, the greatest sense of humor. Oh, my mom was the best. What the hell? Shout out to the ancestors. Shout out to the Majora energy of the ancestors. Shout out to the ancestors, huh? What the hell? A Klan member? So anti-black terrorism, we got to understand. Anti-black terrorism is funny. Hold on, wait a minute, hold on. There's a tether in here. Wait a minute, I was waiting, speaking of her. Milwanda Kitoko. You said I got my hair fixed in Turkey? But no, sir, I'm not Akon. What you see is beautiful FBA hair. We have a tether in here um, sitting here talking about my beautiful FBA hairline, which is all FBA natural Majora energy. No, I don't have to go to Turkey. I'm not Akon. I'm not, a, I'm not one of you tethers that have janky hairlines. Tethers, but listen, you tethers hate to give it up. Look, how about my shit just looks good? Just say that. Damn, you tethers be hating the truth. Tethers, stay mad. Yes, there's a tether in here talking about Tariq got his hair done in Turkey. I saw you, Tether. Well, y'all hate FBA hairlines. Well, y'all so damn jealous of these FBA hairlines. Oh, yeah, y'all see my dad has the exact same hairline as me. My dad is 80-something years old. Very handsome man. That Those robust hairlines run in my family. That's an FBA thing, sir. And janky hairlines is part of your um, um, culture. That's okay. All right, little janky hairlines. That's your culture. Don't come hating now. These tethers always projecting. See, that's the thing. When you grow up eating bush meat and meerkat um, moose and all of this stuff, and you mash meerkat potatoes, yeah, your hairline is going to grow in kind of janky. Yeah? But I digress. But but going back to Kirstie Alley, just the fact that they think terrorism towards us is funny, that's not funny. Your mama dressing like a black girl and your dad is a clan member and they're the odd couple, that shit ain't funny. But they think terrorism towards us is funny. They get a kick out of anti-black terrorism. Us being harmed and punished, that's the highlight of their culture. You, you dig? That's the highlight of their culture. Shout out to the ancestors. Speaking of the ancestors, family, did y'all hear... These people are trying to get an amusement park a water park at Lake Lanier. These folks, hold on. Hold on, let me show y'all some of the articles so y'all don't think I'm jiving around. These people are talking about building a water park at Lake Lanier. Okay, right here. Let me see. Let me let me show you all an article. The New Apocalypto. Let me let me show the article. Hold on. Hold on. All right. The New Apocalypto water slide at Georgia's haunted Lake Lanier causes an uproar. Please go to hell. All right. 
It's going to open on May 4th. The water slide known as the Apocalypto. All right, well, knock your damn self out. I'm not doing that. Y'all go out there, play games if you want to. All right. You go out there and play games if you want to. Well, the folks in the dominant society, they 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 going to challenge the energy. They going to they going to go out there and say, "Hey, we're not going to let those haunted negroes scare us away. Well, get your ass on out there and knock yourself out." Let the white supremacists get out there and slide. All right? Let them go on out there and get let them do what they do. Yeah? If you think that energy in Lake Lanier ain't real, and for those who don't know, Lake Lanier was built over a black town called Oscarville. And those people have the spirit of Majara, and they've been um, um, punishing folks ever since. That spirit is very real in that water. The, the types of deaths that happen in Lake Lanier, man, it, it ain't that many coincidences in the world. The types of deaths that happen out there, them freak accidents that happen out there, boy, that y'all better understand water holds spirits and energy, family. Your final destination. Yeah. Do water holds spirit and energy. And that energy of Majara is all in that water. That FBA spirit of Majara and vengeance is in that water. Y'all remember in Montgomery, right before, two hours before the Montgomery brawl popped off and then brothers start jumping up out that water, whooping ass, two hours before some sisters had a root work ceremony where they gave roots and poured libations and honored that water. They went out there to that riverfront and paid homage to the ancestors. And two hours later, brothers start raising up on them white supremacists. You understand that water, water contains energy, spirits, and memory. Let's just look at this from a science standpoint, not even a religious standpoint. Water contains different energy molecules. Your spirit is an energy. The spirit is, is an energy. Water holds positive and negative energy. Let's, we just talk science here. Family, if you get water, all right? If you get water, you can do experiments on water. If you use a positive charge and a negative charge in water and um, use electrolytes and electrocute the water, you can separate, using positive and negative charges, you can separate the oxygen energy and the hydrogen energy from water. And then with the hydrogen energy, you can turn that into a gas and the gas is flammable. So if you light it up, that should have blow up. I'm just showing you how energy works. Energy can come out of water. You can do certain things to pull energy out of water. You can pull flammable energy out of water. You understand? Water has a lot of energy in it. Spiritual energy as well. I'm just talking science here. We're just talking science. Science can retain energy and memory. Memory is an energy. You understand? This is why we pour libations. Water has a lot of energy and spiritual energy in it. And what happened to those brothers and sisters at, at, in Oscarville, that energy is in that damn water. You better believe that energy, that science energy is in that water. Yes, oxygen, when you separate the molecules, that shit becomes flammable. That's why they make hydrogen bombs. You can make a hydrogen bomb out of the hydrogen from the water. You can blow shit up. You can transform the energy of something. It comes out in different ways, depending on how it's electrocuted, just depending on certain things, depending on the, the moon, because the moon can pull water and the energy of the water. I mean, we got to understand... Water is an energy, and water contains energy, and it contains spirits, man. Yeah, the white supremacists um, um, murdered a lot of the black people in Oscarville and then flooded the black town. And that town has been getting vengeance under that, that water. And black people have been telling stories about 
um, going to Lake Lanier. There was a sister, and shout out to Sister Nicole, she posted this video, this sister talking about her experience years ago in 97 at Lake Lanier, how some, she felt something carry her to the shore because she almost drowned. Now listen to this sister here. This is heavy. Listen to this sister here talking about Lake Lanier and how when she was younger, she almost drowned and she saw some things in the water. Hold on. I'm in Lake Lanier. It was 1997. I went to the Brunswick Drop Course Center um, in January. So it would have been June, July when they took us on a field trip to Lake Lanier, um, like a field day. It was like a whole day thing. And uh, I had a friend of mine who asked me if I would go out on the water, on the floor with her. Now, mind you, she's from Tennessee. I'm from Florida. I'm from the beach, okay? So, um, I told her, yeah, I would go out there with her and Sammy Dredd. Um, but he had to assure me <laughs> that he could swim, which he did. Um, she couldn't swim either. But we both did go out there trusting that if something happened, that he had us, okay? So we go out on the floor, we having a good time, you know, we out there sneaking and burning one, we having a great time. And then all of a sudden, this dude that me and twin, we call him the demon, because every time we smoke with him, we fast forward. Uh -uh. it was like instantly, wow, hold on, hold on. Uh -uh. of the flow into the water. But the moment my face, my head went under the water, there was not a feeling of or a thought of, oh my God, I'm drowning. Mm -mm. It was like instantly, wow, it's trees down here. It is freaking trees under here. And then I heard a voice. I heard a voice, plain as day, it sounded just like me. And it said, Chastity, you're under the water. And I said to myself, of course not out of my mouth because I was under the water, not like this, Lord. In that moment, I heard instructions, which were to take my hands, do them like this, and do the action of maybe of flying. So I put did that with both of my hands, and I out of the water. When I came out of the water, I yelled while looking around, "My feet won't touch the ground!" And boosh, whoo! Excuse me, y'all. Back under the water again. As soon as I got back under the water, man, I'm telling you, there was not a, a thought of fear. It was not a, a thought of, oh my God, I'm drowning. It was, wow, there really is trees under here. And then in that moment, I can't tell you, I don't, all I can tell you is somebody mm -hmm, mm -hmm, picked me up out the water mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and walked me mm -hmm, to the shore. All the movies, my whole, all since, ooh, Jesus, since 97 to now, every movie that I've seen when somebody is drowning, the person that's saving them grabs them around, you know, this area or something like that, and they swim with them to a safe place. That's not what happened. I, nobody swam with me nowhere. Somebody, a black man, picked me up, carried me out of the water, and set me on the shore. I don't owe you a lie, because I don't know you. I've only shared my story with a couple people, and that's my story, and it's the truth, I'm here. And I pray that this video comes across twin, this chat, girl. Oh, right. well, yeah, so yeah, this, this is telling, there's a lot of stories like this. I'm now, I, I think it might be some credence to what she's saying. Some people are like, oh, she might be capping. But look, dude, have you heard some of the stories coming out that's been legitimized by the, the, the media? There was a white man who just got electrocuted, got in the water, and the water just electrocuted him, and don't nobody know where the electricity came from. This wasn't too long ago. This was like a year or so ago, right? Hold on, where's that story? Dude, that's crazy. That's what she's saying don't sound too far-fetched. There's crazier stories than that's that's been verified. There's been stories like people driving their car and then something knocked the damn car over in the water in Lake Lanier. Dude, there's, there's verified stories that's crazier than that. If you think that's crazy, 
dude, their story's way more out there that's been verified by the authorities and they can't really figure out what exactly went went down. I've heard several people say, when you're swimming in the water, something is pulling you in the damn water. Something is pulling you down. Yeah? So yeah, there's something to it out there at Lake Lanier. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see that story about the man who was electrocuted out there. Okay, yeah, right here. Let me play this news story right here. Hold on. Yeah, yeah I remember this happened about a year ago. Hold the on. Army Corps of Engineers says it doesn't have any recorded cases of electric. Okay, now li listen. You, you play with that damn lake if you want to. This is the mainstream media saying this. Hold on. Hold on. Listen to this. Hold on. Hold on. The Army Corps of Engineers says it doesn't have any recorded cases of electrocution on Lake Lanier. And while rare, this could serve as a reminder to boaters to get an electrician to double check their docks. Three people lost their lives in Lake Lanier this past weekend. It was a tough weekend. It's a sad weekend. Divers are continuing the search for a swimmer. 61-year-old Tracy Stewart drowned and perhaps the most unique, a spokesperson for the Department of Natural Resources Law Enforcement Division says 24-year-old Shepard Milner jumped off a dock with a boat lift. He was shocked by the electricity in the water and died at the hospital. The yeah. Forsyth County Sheriff's Office is still investigating if anything faulty caused his death. Some docks do have amperage. They do have electrical units attached to them. And when those electrical units touch down to the water, it can charge the water. I talked to Shepard's mother, Martha Milner, on the phone. She told me our deck was less than three years old and was outfitted with electricity by a licensed electrician. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers spokesperson Steve Stanley says when families get their permits, engineers inspect and ensure the electricians are legit. We try to go around to uh, each of our docks every five years. We try. That doesn't necessarily mean that we do. However, it can't always protect swimmers from something going wrong. They're really there for, for watercraft. They're not necessarily there to like have your patio furniture to go jumping and diving and swimming out of. Martha said the family has owned their lake property for more than 60 years. Okay, so yeah, this dude just jumped in the water and got electrocuted. They don't know. They just make, they just, well, there's some boats there. Cause there ain't no boats um electrifying the water yeah they don't even know they're just saying shit they don't even know this dude jumped in the water and got electrocuted and they don't know that's what i'm saying it's, right electricity from a dock can't charge the whole damn lake so they don't know they they don't even know how to explain that you know so there's stories like that all the time yeah it wasn't no damn um, shortage from the dock that's going to electrify the whole water. Yeah. So yeah, these people mess around with Lake Lanier, all types of freak accidents, stuff like that that happens out there. It, it's crazy. But yeah, they want to have a water park out there? Knock yourselves out. Knock yourselves out. But we better understand how the ancestors work out here, ladies and gentlemen. That ancestral memory is very, very real. And speaking of ancestral memory, get y'all root work deodorant with that High John the Conqueror root in it. You get this at, um, you can get it on Amazon or you get it at rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, the movie Microphone Check is going to be in theaters um, at different places around the, court, in the country in select theaters starting on May 23rd in a couple of months. The weekend of May 23rd is going to be special screenings in multiple cities. That whole weekend, that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, there's going to be screenings um, New York, Dallas, L.A., Atlanta. We're working on Chicago, working on a couple of other cities. All right? And... We keep everybody posted on that. We'll put all the updates on microphonecheck.com so everybody can start getting their advance tickets to the movie Microphone Check, ladies and gentlemen. All right? But anyway, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Get the book, Hidden Heroes from A to Z. And I'm up out of here, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have a great day.